Hello and welcome back to Pat's Kitchen. I am Chef Pat and today we are going to be making four healthy, low calorie, high protein meals that you can have for dinner or anytime you want. We're gonna get started right off the bat. I think is the easiest one and probably the most underrated, a salad. Let's go. Safety first, wash your hands. So for today's salad, I have good old spinach. You can use whatever kind of lettuce you want. I'm going with spinach because it's, uh, you know, full of vitamins. Nice. Ugh, should have washed it first. Okay, wash it. Yeah. Very nice. Spinach in a bowl. Perfect. Today's meat of choice, sliced turkey breast. I like this because it's basically already prepped and super easy. You don't have to use sliced turkey though. You can use something else if you want, but for today's recipe, sliced turkey. Double slice the turkey. Double slice turkey. Next, a bit fruity, we have some strawberries. Slice those puppies up. Gorgeous. Two uh, radishes. Now the radish just gives off such a sophisticated vibe to me. I thought it would be the perfect pop of more color in our salad. Beautiful avocado. Oh. Wow, look at that. Healthy fats. <laughs> okay, now this next step is very important. It's the salad dressing. We're gonna be making poppy seed salad dressing today, but you can make Whatever your heart desires. Mayonnaise. Dijon mustard. Distilled white vinegar. Milk. Bruh. Honey. Oh no, this one's hard. Now we're gonna mix that up. Oh no, the honey is too hard. All right. That's what it looks like. Ideally your honey would be melted, but here in Kitchen Day, Pat, we do what we can. The final touch. Perfect. Okay, so now the last thing is to combine our two things. Also, this is basically the taste. You can switch it up if you want, but it's pretty good. Meal one complete. Very good. All right, now that one was a bit more like an appetizer. That was light work. Now we're getting into the meat of the meals with some lean beef. Let's go. Lean beef meatloaf. Now, okay, full transparency. I don't think I've made, oh my, I don't think I've made a meatloaf in about a decade, but today you and me are making a meatloaf. Let's weigh our meat. 183. Toasted onion mix. You can also use a, uh, raw onion, but I saw someone use some soup mixes 
and thought that was rather clever. So today, that's what we're doing. What is that? <gasps> Paper. Ah! Here's about half. Paprika. Minced garlic. An egg. <laughs> Stuffing mix. Now I don't want to hear nothing about this, okay? Not a peep! If you're not vibing with the stuffy mix, I guess you can use crusty bread. I don't know, but today in the house of Pat, we are using stovetop stuffy mix. Milk. Just a wee dash. I don't even know if that was <laughs> necessary. I just wanted to put that in there. And everybody's favorite Worcestershire sauce. Oh, why is it not coming out? Mix. Happy healthy holiday meal. Scrumptious. Now after our meat has been mixed, we're going to loaf it. Loaf of choice. Now I saw someone else do a recipe where you could put it in the air fryer. Um, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna put it in the oven at 400 for as long as it takes. I'll let you know. Ta-da! And after 30 minutes, our meatloaf is done. Meatloaf, complete loaf. We also have here uh, 30 grams of ketchup and some Worcestershire sauce. If you don't like ketchup, you can use barbecue sauce. If you don't like barbecue sauce, you can use whatever sauce you want. This is just kind of the classic meatloaf situation though, so we're keeping it OG. Oh my God. Yo. Hell no, man. What the Isn't meatloaf so beautiful? It just screams. Yeah. Meatloaf, complete loaf. Next meal, this might cause a bit of a ruckus amongst the group because we're going to be utilizing ye old <laughs> microwave quite a bit. If you don't want to use the microwave, I don't know what to tell you, but we are going to be using the microwave for this next meal and we will also be using an air fryer. The air fryer is not necessary, but I saw someone use it to make chicken. So that's what we're doing today. Wow. Let's go. Riced cauliflower that you steam in the bag. That's also not important, but just so everyone knows that that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. Oh, there's also instructions to cook it on the stove. Uh, we're not gonna do that because because we're not going to, but if you want to, there you go. There you go. <laughs> now, while we wait for our BPA meal, um, we'll prepare the chicken. Chicken breast that I sliced up. Season as you'd like. I'm using garlic salt, organic, to combat the BPAs. Because that's exactly how it works. Soy sauce. Mix in time. Make sure to mix it with your hands so that you can feel, feel the gains. Sensory overload. Oh, feels really nice. Feels really good. Yes. Now we take our air fryer, prep it. If you don't have an air fryer, feel free to uh, stove top it. Oops. I don't know how to work that. <laughs> All right. 
our nice puffy bag of riced vegetables <gasps> is done. Time to double dose with the microplastics. Microwave rice, microwave. This part's low key kind of optional. Like if you want the egg for the fried rice part, I feel like the meal's fine without it, but up to you. Half a cup of our vegetables, half a cup of our rice, a little bit more soy sauce. Damn, that looks like a lot. <laughs> it says it was just half a cup, so. Okay, our chicken turned out pretty good. So if you don't have an air fryer, I suggest you invest in one because this is good chicken. Now we're gonna plate our fried rice chicken meal. Okay, we do get all of this, which is actually a good amount. I'm gonna try to make it pretty. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Damn. You don't have to make it pretty. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, come on now, that's pretty gorgeous. Especially for a Chef Pat meal. Come on now. Now we're gonna garnish. Uh, you can use whatever sauces you want. I have eel sauce and this sriracha aioli, so that's what we're gonna be using today. Damn, ugly, no! <laughs> Okay, not too bad. I like that. Okay, in the last delicious dinner, we have spaghetti squash. If you don't know what spaghetti squash is, it's a squash that's like spaghetti inside. And it's amazing, and it reminds me of my mother because she used to make this, not necessarily this recipe, but she used to make spaghetti squash. So today, you and me. We're making spaghetti squash. Let's go. First step, spaghetti squash. Cut it in half. <sighs> this is usually the most embarrassing part for me. There we go, nearly perfect. Now, you'll see inside, it's a squash and it has seeds. So next we need to clear out the seeds. You can do it with your hands. That's how I like to do it. Or you can do it with something else. But I don't know what you do it with. Your feet? Stinky, like a pumpkin. Squash cleared, next we're gonna cook it. So when my mom used to make it, she'd usually make it in the microwave and you need to microwave it for a while cause it's very, it's very firm. So you'd have to microwave for at least like 10 minutes. Today I think we're going to do a little bit of microwave and a little bit of baking because, because we are. So important, when you microwave it, make sure you put a little bit of water in there to keep it moist. And another pro tip, it's good to flip it when it's in there. So you cook it facing up and facing down. This one we're gonna do vegetarian style. So if you're a vegetarian, shout out, this one goes to you. If you're not a vegetarian, you can add meat, but it's pretty easy just to add meat, not add meat. We're not adding meat this time. Let's go. No meat, but still protein. Cottage cheese, Newton. Not sponsored, not sponsored. Best brand. Milk. 
tomato, salt, minced garlic. Next, blend that. Blended. Okay. I put it in a cupcake pan. You'll pretty much know that it's done when it's falling off the bone, baby. When it's coming right off. Ooh, it's hissing. If it's still hard on any part, then that means it's not done. But when it comes off the rim easily, it's, it's ready to go. You can now plate it however you'd like. I like to put it in a bowl for easy access. This is what I mean by falling off the bone. Ooh. Falling off the bone. Yeah! Ouch! Now you can, golly! <laughs> you can flavor it however you want, but we did it vegetarian style, so. Ooh, interesting pink color. All right, good, good, very good. It looks like a beautiful exotic fruit. Huh? Oh my gosh. Wow. Now is more of a garnish. I'm gonna put on some of our, uh, these here spinach leaves. As you can see, I probably wouldn't make it very long in culinary school. <laughs> I thought this one was gonna be so pretty and it's so, I don't know. I guess it is beautiful in its own way. This is also good with like cheese, but I feel like we've already given the lactose intolerant people enough trouble with this one, so. Yeah, that's good, nice. Okay, and finally, I will be trying them all on camera, just to show you that they are edible, regardless of what they may look like. First things first though, let's set the mood, the Gorilla Mine mood. <laughs> gorilla Mine, code beef. <laughs> nice and frothy. Cheers. Now, the salad, first one. Honestly, this one's pretty self-explanatory what it tastes like. I already ate most of it. Yeah, it's good. My only thing would be you might need more of the dressing, especially if you have a lot of leaves in there, because personally, I don't really like when the dressing isn't touching all the leaves. I don't like a dry leaf. Okay, well, that one's good. If you don't like, some of those ingredients though, you probably won't like it because it just tastes like what the ingredients are. It's a salad, but um, I like it. Next, the loaf. I love meatloaf. I don't know why it gets a bad rep. It's just so perfect. It's meat in loaf form. Mm. And this one is very delicious. I was a little worried just because I haven't made a meatloaf in so long, but did not disappoint. Next are chicken and fried rice. This is the part I'm most worried about if this is gonna taste okay, the rice part. Tastes really good. I think my only critique here would maybe, maybe needs a little more salt. We did use the low sodium soy sauce, so even could have just used more soy sauce. Would have been better, but it is amazing. Great thing about mixing the rice with the cauliflowered vegetables is they just kind of blend in with the rice. So as long as you're not using like 1% rice, 99% vegetables, it's gonna basically seem like rice. So that's very nice. Chicken is also chicken. So it is what it is. It's good, I guess. I realized I don't think I like that sriracha aioli. 
I'm also pretty sure it probably went bad a couple years ago, so that could contribute to that factor. But overall, it's really good. The rice did not disappoint. The rice aspect is super good. So if you're looking for a way to bulk up your rice without ricing up your rice, cauliflower rice. <laughs> Lastly, our vegetarian option. It's good. My mom used to make it with butter, so we are kind of missing that richness there, but it's still good with or without butter in my opinion. Okay, and that concludes our four low calorie, high protein dinners of the day. Thank you for watching. If you have made these before or something similar, please let me know your thoughts. If you have another favorite recipe that I didn't include, please comment that below because I would love to know it. Also, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And leave a silly comment below because I always love hearing from you. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios.